All right, so that's what the passive stiffness, the passive structure, so our tendons, ligaments, our extracellular matrix within our muscle, that's how they, that's how they influence what, uh, what our economy is. The way that our muscle influences how, what our, how economical we are at moving is it's going to perform one of four different roles. And these four roles are going to be really important for how economical an athlete you are. So the muscle can work as a motor, and a motor is simply a shortening contraction that overcomes inertia. So that's like your bicep curl. Okay, simple. That one we can all con that one we can all really conceptualize really well. So for a rower, we're going to pull really hard. We're going to use our back. We're going to use our legs. All of those muscles as a motor. If we're going to be a cyclist and we're going to put weight through our leg, we're going to use our quads on the way down, hamstrings on the way up to use our muscles as a motor to overcome the inertia of the bike. When we use our muscles as a brake, it's like when we're running downhill. So when you're running downhill, now if you're running down a very steep hill, what you're going to do is you're going to put your legs out and you're going to hit the ground with more like your heel and you're going to flatten and you're going to smack the ground and you're going to use your quadriceps muscle as a brake. That means that it's going to perform a lengthening contraction to reduce the inertia. So you're coming down a super steep hill, you're going to use that muscle as a brake to prevent yourself from going way too fast and tumbling over. It's a wonderful thing to watch little kids do this because they've never done this. If you get them young enough, you get them to the hot top of a hill and you say, go run down the hill. And they go steaming down the hill until they can't get their feet out in front of them fast enough and push right into their face. Okay, as long as it's grassy, they'll be fine. It's just, again, it's, it's they haven't learned to use their muscles as brakes yet. All right, so we've already talked about using our muscles um, as motors and brakes. The third one is using it as a strut. And this is where we use our muscles isometrically to transmit force. So when we use our muscles as struts, they're actually working much more like a tendon. And what they're doing is they're basically changing the joint that moves. So if we do this, if I come out here, and I just show you a simple experiment. So I'm going to be completely loose. I'm going to put some pressure on my elbow, and I'm going to bend at my elbow. If I do an isometric contraction of my tricep now, and I do the same thing, now I'm moving at the shoulder. So what I've done by using that isometric contraction is I've changed the joint that moves. Okay, And that's what, how we use our muscles as struts. Isometric contractions so that we can transmit forces much more like tendons. The last one is the hardest to conceptualize because everybody thinks that springs means like when you're jumping rope, that's a spring. That is not a spring. Your muscle is working as a strut when you jump rope because it contracts, you land, you store and return energy within the tendon. Okay? Springs, in other, it, by contrast, springs are when we use our muscles to spring our muscles forward using momentum. It's a dynamic contraction that changes the stiffness of the muscle. It's not really de designed to cause, to produce force or to do any, it's designed to change the stiffness of the structure, of the musculoskeletal, of the, mus the muscle and the tendon together so that the muscle and tendon store as much possible energy and return it. And usually when we see that is at the end of a range of motion. Okay, so when muscles that work as springs are like our hip flexors. When we're running really fast, what we're going to do is we're going to get to the back end of the range of motion, and we need to get that leg back out in front. And as it's coming to the range of motion, it's going to be stretching anyway. So, so we're going to use the fact that it's going to stretch our hip flexors and the tendons and the ligaments within there. And we're just going to do a ballistic contraction, just a quick contraction that's designed to store and then quickly, right before it gets to the end of the range of motion, we're going to store as much energy as we can and we're going to fly that thing back forward. And I'll give you an example of that in a second. So it's really the shoulders and the hips when we're going backwards and we need to get it out in front really quickly, but we're getting to the back of the range anyway, so we're going to stretch that tendon there and we're going to just use a muscle contraction to just give it the, prop the propulsion to go forward. So really, the best example of muscle as a spring is this one. And this is the cheetah. So you're going to have 3.5 strides per second in this cheetah. It's going to go 70 miles an hour. And you've got to go every three and a half times a second, you have to go with this shoulder, with that foot back there, completely behind it, to out here 
and you've got to do that three and a half times a second. There's no way that you can actively say, okay, contract and lift and get your arm out that fast. So what you have to do is you have to come into the idea that at the end of the range of motion, there's going to be a natural stretch. And if I hit with a ballistic contraction right when that stretch is maximal, bang, it's going to fl fling the whole thing forward and you're just going to prop and it's going to fly it forward without any other effort other than that instantaneous contraction right when it hit the end of the range of motion. All right. So it looks like this in, in, in moving vision. So there you can see the animal coming flying past and you can see that it's reaching, reaching, reaching. Oh, wait a second. Huh. Nice. All right. So, so obviously that's not going to happen, but what is going to happen is you're going to be able to take that stretch that you can feel right when you get to the end of the range of motion. And you know that if you just do a little twitch, it's going to fling it forward because it's going to use that stretch. Boop, there's a little bit of muscle action to get it to come forward. All right. And that's really using your muscle as a spring.